Hello fragrance family and friends. I'm Tommy with Studio Sense. Welcome to another video review today. Today I'm going to be looking at a 2021 release from the House of Tommy Hilfiger. There was a Tommy Girl Now, there was Tommy Now was released I think March or May of last year and now there is a Now Them which is a 2021 release. Hey guys, sorry for the sudden drastic change in camera view. I had a little bit of a technical issue. It was some kind of interference that completely cut off my my actual intro there. So let me just go back over that. So when we return, we're gonna take a closer look at Tommy Them Now, that and more, so stay tuned. Hey guys, and welcome back. So yes, today we're looking at new release for 2021. This is going to be my first impressions. Now the box has been unwrapped. Apologize for that. I usually do that in front of the camera for some reason. I took the wrap off, took the bottle out and then was like, oh yeah, I got to do a first impression on this. So I put it back in and haven't actually sprayed it or tried it out. So today is going to be a tried and true first impression. What is Tommy now them? It's kind of a confusing, like if you're not sure what was released prior to this, you might read this as them now. In a nutshell, and I'm not going to wax political on this, this is Tommy Hilfiger's idea of being a woke generation release. Without going into a ton of detail, they're, they're, this is a unisex fragrance. They had Tommy Girl, they had Tommy Now. Without any kind of political agenda or taking sides, picking sides or choosing sides, this seems to be a very galvanizing fragrance. Hilfiger is using the pronoun them and targeting through marketing a specific group of people. So without any gender bias at all, just talking about the fragrance itself, this is supposed to be a mix or a confluence of the Tommy Girl and the Tommy Now for men, thus being the unisex, Tommy, now them. Concept is okay, I get the idea. A lot of unisex fragrances are kind of wishy-washy and as a result, rather weak. So is this gonna succumb to the weak sauce that a lot of unisex fragrances succumb to? Or is this gonna be a really nice fragrance? We're gonna find out in just a moment. Uh, first though, let's check out that presentation briefly. Let's talk a little bit about that note breakdown. Tommy Now Them features top notes of bergamot, mandarin orange, pear, and pink peppercorn, with heart notes of geranium, green cardamom, and ginger, resting on a base of cashmere, oak moss, and sandalwood. Again, Tommy Now Them is supposed to be a composition featuring the best of Tommy Girl and Tommy Now for men. Let's go ahead and check out the juice and see what it's like. I've read a little bit of, of first reactions of this, of some people's feelings about, it. seems like a lot of people or a few people anyway, don't like the note of pear in fragrance. But I guess if you don't like that soft, semi velvety fruity note, then you probably don't like pear. I for one have no problem with pear, plum, any of the pea fruits. Pomegranate. It's definitely unisex. It's definitely unisex. I actually kind of like this. The open is very fruity. It's very bergamot, pear, and then it, it has a lot of boost and lift given to it by the ginger, which is in the heart. So off a of tester strip, it feels more feminine than it does masculine. So it is a very, definitely a definitive unisex fragrance. So I'll give it kudos to that. I think they were successful in creating a unisex vibe, a unisex fragrance. There's nothing overtly masculine here. There's probably a little bit more on the spectrum of feminine than there is on the, the masculine. It's almost like a YSL Y fruity in the top. That burst of fruit and pear is very powerful which is interesting in a unisex fragrance. So if you like fruity fragrances, very similar to, let's see, there's that First Instinct Together by Abercrombie & Fitch. That's very fruit forward. A very similar vibe coming out of this. I really enjoy cashmere as a note and mixed with oak moss and sandalwood. The expectation is that you're gonna get something velvety, creamy, buttery, smooth, and milky. And that's really 
what would be a nice addition if this features that in the dry down. So let's go ahead and spray it on skin and we'll give it a try because I don't have anything currently. I just got out of the shower a moment ago. And give it a moment to dry down. See if a little bit of that feminine vibe goes away when it starts to dry down. That would be my hope. Not that I worry about smelling feminine, but I do like my fragrances to have a little bit of a stand more one way or the other. This one in the spectrum of unisex isn't cutting it down the middle. I think it's more feminine on the, on the feminine side, but in a fruity way, which is, which is very pleasant. The bergamot, the mandarin orange, the, the pear and the pink peppercorn in the top are very strong, very powerful. Geranium and ginger are a good combo for carrying your fragrance and making it more, you know, giving it more volume, adding, adding more depth and breadth to it, which is what it's doing to this fragrance. That fruit vibe isn't just the open or heart of this, that's really what's at the core of this fragrance. So if you're wanting something that is, it kind of reminds me a little bit of these summer iterations of Calvin Klein, uh, which are unisex also, by the way, successfully unisex, I think. Uh, this is kind of vibing that way with a little bit more on the, the feminine. So the dry down is actually becoming a little bit less fruity, but it's taking a while. It actually is. That, that's kind of surprising. So this actually has a really good half-life. The dry down is becoming a little bit more cashmere and sandalwood smooth. Oak moss adding a little bit of that earthy overtones to it that tones down some of that fruit, which is a nice, nice balance. Overall, while I do like the open of this because it is so fruit forward, I enjoy the dry down a lot better. It's a nice balance between those fruits, those spices, and those a little bit warmer notes, and the, the balance between the cashmere and the sandalwood, which, which give it a little bit of a creamy, uh, earthy overtones, which kind of knocks some of the harsher edges off of the sweetness that sometimes can follow fruity fragrances. So the sweetness in this is pretty maximum. It's very it's a very sweet up front, but once that sweetness starts dying down, then it's a very pleasant fragrance and it's not quite so feminine feeling. Like the open is very fruity, so it sits there in the middle of the spectrum. As it starts drying down, it gets a little bit more of a feminine feel to it. So it moves a little bit towards the feminine side of the spectrum. As it dries down, it moves back to the middle again, right where it should be. I think overall they did a good job of balancing those notes out to finally come to a unisex friendly place or area when it comes to the notes and the smell. Projection is quite surprising for a Tommy Hilfiger fragrance. Usually they're rather subdued or soft. This is announcing itself pretty strongly, pretty powerfully. It, it actually makes me interested in picking up Tommy now for men. I want to try that out. How that balances out in terms of where it fits on the spectrum for this fragrance, how it compares. I don't know that I would wear this over YSL if I wanted a fruity fragrance or even Abercrombie and Fitch, you know, first instinct together. I think I probably would wear those over this. Do I think it's a successful unisex fragrance? Yeah, I think they did it. I think they did a pretty good job, pretty decent job. Is it a fantastic pioneering a new path in the unisex fragrance community? Not really. It's just a nice fruity fragrance, very similar to Calvin Klein's summer edition as, as the years go by, as they get, you know, fruitier. I think 2019 was a really nice floral fruit. Um, 2020 is a little bit more citrus. So if you were to combine 2019 and 2020 of Calvin Klein's summer editions, you would come up with this. If you don't like your fragrances very fruity and very pear oriented, you won't like this because it's very strong that way. This one is gonna be best utilized in spring and summer because fruits are very much spring and summer oriented not really going to be a winter or cool weather fragrance. I think they definitely could have done better on the naming convention, but that's all I'm going to say about that. But as, as far as the fragrance is concerned, there's it's a likable, fruity, pear-oriented fragrance. Not super great, not super bad, right around average. Guys, thanks so much for checking out my video today. If you're interested in picking up Tommy Now Them, I did leave a link in the description below where you can pick it up at a decent price. It being a new 2021 release, you would think that it's rather expensive. It is not. I think maybe they realized once they released it how many people it might be galvanized by or upset by the naming convention. So for those of you that are looking for new fragrances at a discount that don't really care about the name, this might be a good pickup for you. Thanks so much for stopping by and checking out today's first impression video. As always, thank you so much for your support on my channel. I'm Tommy with Studio Sense, and I'll see you tomorrow.